Slip both ends of the rubber hose over the adapter valves and extend the hose over the reservoir. Cut the hose approximately in the middle. Submerge the open ends of the hose in the brake fluid of the corresponding reservoir. With your thumb and forefinger, hold both hoses against the dividing wall of the master cylinder. Support the hoses with light finger pressure and press the piston inward. Make sure you're wearing safety goggles all during the installation. When the piston has traveled its full stroke, squeeze both hoses closed against the dividing wall of the reservoir and allow the piston to return to its normal position. Make sure the hoses stay submerged in the brake fluid. Repeat this procedure until the fluid coming out of the ends of the tubing is completely free from any air bubbles. Remove the ends of the tubing from the fluid and tie the rubber tubing in a knot to prevent fluid spillage. Do not remove the tubing or fittings yet. Reinstall the master cylinder cover on the top of the master cylinder. Install the replacement master cylinder on the vehicle, making sure the push rod is correctly positioned. On master cylinders with permanently mounted push rods, reconnect the push rod to the brake lever on the inside of the car. Reinstall the master cylinder mounting nuts or bolts and tighten them securely. Remove the rubber hose and remove the brake bleeding adapters. Loosely install the brake lines to the master cylinder. Have another person slowly depress the brake pedal until the brake fluid seeps past the threads of the fittings and now tighten the line with flare nut wrenches. Do not release the brake pedal until the fittings are securely tight. Remove the cover and double check the fluid level. The level should be approximately one quarter of an inch from the top of the reservoir. Add fluid as necessary and reinstall the cover. Lastly, depress the brake pedal several times to ensure the pedal is at the proper height and is firm. If the vehicle is equipped with power brakes, you may have to start the engine to feel a firm pedal. Take the car out and test drive it, making a few easy stops at first. You're done. You've saved yourself money and at the same time gained the satisfaction of doing your own automotive repairs. Now let's review replacing a master cylinder. First, compare the new master cylinder to the old one. Use protective covers to keep brake fluid from getting on the paint. Disconnect the brake lines from the master cylinder. Remove the master cylinder mounting bolt and the master cylinder. Bench bleed the new master cylinder. Install the new master cylinder on the vehicle. Start the mounting bolts or nuts by hand. Loosely install the brake lines to the master cylinder, purge the air from the lines, then tighten the line fittings. Top off the master cylinder, and depress the brake pedal several times to verify correct operation. The items you'll need are a piece of clear plastic hose in a clear container, a brake bleeding wrench, or a couple of small six-point box end wrenches, usually about five-sixteenths of an inch or three-eighths of an inch in size, some spray penetrating oil, a pair of safety glasses and some shop towels, brake fluid up to two quarts if you're going to bleed the entire system, and in some cases, a hammer and a small propane torch is also necessary. The first step is to remove the cover on the master cylinder. Fill each side of the cylinder with brake fluid to within one quarter of an inch from the top of the reservoir. Set the cover back on the top of the master cylinder, but don't lock it down at this time as you'll be removing it periodically to add more fluid. Now spray down all the bleeder screws with penetrating oil. This may help loosen stuck or corroded bleeders. Using a six point wrench or socket, go around the vehicle and loosen each bleeder screw. Make sure to use a six-point wrench or socket to prevent rounding off the head of the bleeder screw. If the bleeder screw won't come loose, you may need to heat the area around the bleeder screw with a small propane torch. Next, tap lightly on the top edge of the bleeder with the hammer while turning the bleeder with the wrench. Once loosened, we recommend replacing the bleeder screws with new ones. Now you'll need help with the second person in the car to operate the brake pedal. With all the bleeder screws tight and the master cylinder full of fluid, gently pump the brake pedal three or four times and hold it in its depressed position. Attach the clear hose to the bleeder screw of the wheel furthest away from the master cylinder. Route the other end of the hose into the clear container. 
Now open the bleeder screw. The brake pedal inside the car should go slowly to the floor. When the pedal reaches the floor, close the bleeder screw. Allow the brake pedal to return slowly to the released position. Never allow the pedal to return to its released position with the bleeder screw open as this will draw air back into the system. Again, apply pressure to the brake pedal and open the bleeder screw. Note the fluid coming through the hose. Once again, when the pedal reaches the floor, tighten the bleeder screw. Repeat this procedure until there isn't any air or bubbles passing through the hose. Check the level of the master cylinder and add fluid as necessary. Repeat this entire procedure for each wheel working your way from the wheel farthest away from the master cylinder, usually the right rear, and ending up on the wheel closest to the master cylinder, usually the left front. Make sure you're frequently checking the fluid level in the master cylinder during bleeding. When all the air bubbles are removed and a firm pedal is felt, tightly install the cover on the master cylinder. Make sure to dispose of the old brake fluid properly. Let's review bleeding the brake system. First, make sure the master cylinder is full of brake fluid and is checked often during the bleeding process. Check each bleeder screw for correct operation. Attach clear plastic hose to the bleeder screw farthest from the master cylinder. Pump the brake pedal slowly several times to build pressure, then hold the pedal. Open the bleeder screw until the brake pedal goes to the floor, then close the bleeder screw. Repeat this until no air bubbles are seen coming from the bleeder. Repeat the procedure at each bleeder in sequence. Finally, top off the master cylinder and test drive the vehicle. The items you'll need to replace your brake caliper include your vehicle's jack, lug wrench, and a pair of jack stands, a socket or wrench set, a large screwdriver or pry bar, and possibly a hammer and punch. On some GM, Ford, and import applications, you might also need a hex or torx bit socket for caliper removal. And of course, you'll need the replacement caliper, mounting hardware, and possibly a new set of disc brake pads. First, park your vehicle on level ground and block the tires on the opposite end of the vehicle from where you'll be working. Raise the vehicle with the jack and support it with jack stands. Remove the wheel, making sure to mark its position to retain balance during reinstallation. Now loosen the clamp on the top of the master cylinder. This will allow room for return of any brake fluid into the master cylinder. To remove the caliper, the first step is to remove the mounting hardware. First, turn the front rotor so you can easier access the caliper mounting hardware. A method widely used on General Motors and some Ford vehicles requires the removal of long mounting bolts for caliper removal. Often this requires the use of a special hex bit or torx bit socket as shown.